All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be talking about two of my favorite turtles on the planet, and that is the loggerhead musk turtle and the striped neck musk turtle. So stick around and we'll get into the differences. All right, so if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you've probably seen my field herping videos. And two turtles that you see all the time in my videos are the loggerhead musk turtle and the striped neck musk turtle. Now the loggerhead is one of the turtles that you'll see a lot of times when I'm doing night videos, uh, when I'm in some of the waters that are a little bit east of here, or a little bit south of here. Um, I live in a pretty interesting area where I have the ability that I can go west or north and run into the striped neck moss turtle. I can go a little east or south and run into the loggerhead moss turtle. So both of these species are often seen on my channel, uh, both uh, in the wild and sometimes you'll see them in some of my videos running around in the pond back there. So the typical loggerhead moss turtle habitat is going to be either swift to medium flowing rivers, uh, oftentimes rocky, uh, sometimes they'll enter sandy stretches, uh, but they typically like moving water. Um, in this part of their range, it's usually going to be rocky uh, with gaps of uh, gravel and sand, and then sometimes deeper water, like the Flint River has big deep holes in it, and you'll even see loggerheads climbing up rocks, so they can handle deep water. I know in the Florida Springs, you can actually see these guys in about 30 or 40 feet of crystal clear water and you can actually see them zipping along the bottom. So it's pretty cool. And the striped mag musk turtle, they like swift flowing water uh, and oftentimes it's very cold. Whereas the type of uh, cold water that you would find a loggerhead musk turtle in in the springs is going to be in the 70s. Uh, Peltifer, the scientific name for the striped neck musk turtle, Sternothrus peltifer, they're going to enjoy those colder flowing trout streams. So sometimes that water is only in the 50s and these turtles just flourish in there. Um, I've been to some of these mountain streams where the only turtles you'll even see are striped neck musk turtles. And they can get really dense in those areas and they just feed on little snails. Um, a lot of times you'll see these mountain streams, so like snails will just cover the entire bottom and those are the areas that are going to have the highest concentrations of striped neck moss turtles. It's just one of their favorite things to eat. That is a pretty old girl. Alright, so there are differences in appearance between the loggerhead musk turtle and the striped neck musk turtle. The loggerhead tends to have a polka dot or flex pattern. Sometimes they'll morph into a little bit of a wormy kind of shape, but overall they have a very scattered pattern on either a very light background, uh, sometimes a white almost, uh, could be a little bit yellowish or a cream color, all the way up to uh, being sometimes almost brown. So they can be a very light or very dark, uh, but they do, they're extremely variable. Uh, the, Loggerhead musk turtles grow these enormous heads, uh, just like their name uh, suggests, and that's just for eating their uh, favorite foods of crustaceans and mollusks. Striped neck musk turtles, on the other hand, are the most beautiful of all the musk turtles. Uh, they have these bright yellow stripes uh, with dark black lines in between, um, and then the top of their head has like a flecked pattern, almost similar to that of the loggerhead. Uh, but their heads are a little bit shaped different, have a little bit different of a jawline, and whereas the loggerheads, as they age, their heads kind of expand um, vertically and horizontally. The, it seems that the striped neck musk turtle head almost expands left to right more than top and bottom. And their pattern as they age, uh, they keep that yellow pattern, but it does get increasing amounts of black. I've got a frog calling over my shoulder just because I'm talking. But the uh, striped neck musk turtle is absolutely beautiful. They can be uh, a very light yellow or green color. Um, they can be a bright yellow. They can almost be orange. I've even seen uh, one population where they were like a reddish color. So the most beautiful of all the musk turtles. Uh, they're just gorgeous. And I, I never get tired of seeing striped neck musk turtles. No two are the exact same.
So, if you want to care for a loggerhead musk turtle, uh, I highly recommend setting up um, a tub with some flow to it, maybe a sand and gravel mix bottom. That's what I prefer to use. Um, here in my pond behind me, I actually have about six or seven adults, only two males. Uh, males can get combative with each other if there's not enough space. Um, so I tend to like a low male to female ratio, and, uh, but they do well together. My loggerhead musk turtles, I keep in various setups. I have a few tubs uh, kind of over on my patio area, and that's where I raise some of my baby ones. There's even some uh, baby loggerheads in my baby turtle stock tank that hatched out last year. Uh, they do great in communities. Uh, they're just a neat little guy that runs along the bottom. They help kind of clean up things. In this pond, they really seem to enjoy in the early evening, um, in the afternoon, coming up into the shallow area and eating all the little clams up there and the little snails. And then they'll go off to the deeper water uh, during the heat of the day and through the rest of the night. And then the striped neck musk turtles, I actually do a Tough Stuff 110 gallon uh, stock tank and they live in there with my blotched map turtles and they, they coexist really well. Uh, these are two species that actually do cohabitate in part of their range in southern Mississippi and it, it's just a good little, uh, it's a good setup. I love watching them interact together. Uh, feeding time in that tub is just insane. They're just all going everywhere and they're all just going after the uh, freeze dried krill or whatever I'm dropping in there. Uh, for my striped neck musk turtles. Uh, the main thing is just keeping them cool. So they're in a part of my yard that almost never really gets that much direct sun except for the early morning. And uh, this, this keeps their tank water cool. Uh, they're actually one of the few turtles I recommend most people to actually keep indoors uh, just because that water really needs to stay on the cooler and you don't need to run a heater for them. Um, they don't really need like a hot basking area. They will occasionally climb out and bask, but um, the main thing is just to keep them cool. You have to remember this is a cool water species. Now there is a third <laughs> kind of in between uh, species of musk turtle that kind of sits nicely in between the loggerhead and the striped neck musk turtle. And that's the intermediate musk turtle. Now I got a group of these uh, years ago and I thought that they were just loggerheads and the guy had told me that he had got them from somebody in Florida and I never really knew much about them other than I thought the adults had these really pretty light colored jaws, kind of weird looking heads and I just thought that they were a little bit different looking and um, one thing is is they breed like crazy so I have a whole bunch of little intermediate musk turtles. Now this is a recently recognized species. Previously they thought it was just where the ranges of the loggerhead and striped neck crossed but turned out through genetic work to be its own independent species and the uh, intermediate musk turtle is now recognized. Uh, I believe uh, it's also known as the Aliflora musk turtle because of it kind of straddling that line between the Florida Panhandle and southern Alabama. I'll do another video on the intermediate musk turtle soon, but I did feel like it was worth mentioning since we're talking about um, the two turtles that it kind of is intermediate between. See how that worked? So it's worth mentioning that if you are interested in getting uh, a striped neck musk turtle, a loggerhead musk turtle, take your time, don't rush. Uh, make sure you get captive bred. Uh, these turtles are poached and poached heavily. Uh, they're in high demand by uh, buyers in Asia and around the world. And because of that, they're being collected as adults in huge numbers and often illegally. So uh, you really wanna make sure that who you're getting it from, you properly vet and make sure that they are selling captive bred offspring. <laughs> all right thank you for watching this video i appreciate you guys uh drop a like leave a comment uh, i want to hear about what you guys think about the loggerhead and striped neck musk turtles and i will see you guys on the next one you'll take care stay cool out there <laughs>